Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about classification of matter. So we're going to be looking at lessons one and two today. So you'll be seeing this over the course of the next couple of days. First thing I want you to do is to take a moment to think about how can you separate different substances in a mixture? So if you can pause for a moment and talk to your classmates about the different ways to separate a substance and you'll have about 30 to 45 seconds to do that. Okay, so different methods of separating a mixture. We have filtering, we have picking out pieces. For example, in this picture here, we can easily pull out the M&Ms, the almonds, the cashews, the peanuts, and any of the little parts, the raisins, and we can easily put them in different piles. Okay, but we have a lot of different substances uh, that you may not necessarily be able to pull pieces out. So identifying different ways to separate the substances based on what is mixed together is important, if they can be separated at all. So, your first expectation is to analyze models of matter to construct an explanation to differentiate between pure substances and non-pure substances. So today you will create and carry out a procedure to separate an unknown mixture so that you can distinguish amongst mixtures and pure substances and you'll know you have it when you've separated the mixture out into its component substances. Now, obviously, under the circumstances, we can't do the lab, but we are actually going to walk through the lab and you're actually going to get to see it so that you can understand exactly what it is that's expected in this scenario. So, first question is, and you're going to have about two to three minutes to do this, how could you separate out the different substances in the following mixtures? A bowl of cereal, a cup of wet sand, salt water, and a jar of oil and vinegar. So take a couple of minutes and talk to your table mates and write down on your sheet, how can you separate these different substances? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. A bowl of cereal. <clears throat> well, in this particular case, the bowl of cereal is wet, so let's look at the two different scenarios. Let's say, first, we have a bowl of dry cereal. With a bowl of dry cereal, you can actually separate the different parts out. In this case, we have a lovely bowl of Lucky Charms, and we can separate the non-marshmallow pieces from the marshmallow pieces and put the marshmallow pieces in one pile or separate them based on design. For example, the four leaf clovers in one pile and the rainbows in another pile. Or you can separate them just simply by cereal versus marshmallow. In the case of it having milk, you would pour it through a strainer, strain out the milk, and then separate the pieces by cereal and marshmallow. If we're talking about a cup of wet sand, well, a cup of wet sand indicates that there is water in it, so we would run it through filter paper, and we would filter out the water, leaving the, wet, the sand behind. 
okay? And we can evaporate out the rest of the water. Salt water. Well, the thing about salt water is it dissolves and it forms a special kind of mixture called a solution. So in the case of salt water, the best way to separate salt from water is to evaporate the water out, leaving the salt behind. Now, salt, you can actually boil the water off or if you put it in a glass in an environment or in a container in an environment that's open, the water will eventually evaporate off on its own. But evaporation is the best method to separate that. And a jar of oil and vinegar, the best way to separate a jar of oil and vinegar is by using a pipette. To give you an idea what a pipette is, a pipette looks like this. And uh, basically you might call it a dropper and you would use it to suction out very carefully either the oil or the vinegar leaving, leaving the other behind. So, what are some other examples of mixtures? What makes something a mixture? And if something is not a mixture, then what is it? So, here are some rules to consider when turning and talking to your partners. First of all, look at your partner, listen to what they're saying, and speak when it is your turn. Tell your partner to answer in one or two sentences. Listen without interrupting while your partner tells you their answer and be kind and supportive so everyone feels comfortable sharing their answers. Remember, this is a safe space. We want you to feel comfortable when discussing your answers. So you're gonna take about a minute and a half and you're going to discuss what are some mixtures, what makes something a mixture, and if something is not a mixture, then what is it? Okay, so what are some other examples of mixtures? Well, I'm sure some of us drink Kool-Aid. When you mix that Kool-Aid powder with the water, that is a mixture. Uh, salad is a mixture. Salad dressing is a mixture. I don't know how many of you have ever had Italian dressing before, but that's a mixture of oil and vinegar and different types of spices. Uh, pretty much anything you make in the kitchen is a mixture. Okay, when you bake a cake, you have a mixture in the bowl of the flour, the water, the eggs, the sugar, the vanilla, all of that is a mixture. So those are just a few examples. If you look in your book bag, your books, your papers, your pencils, your pens, your sharpeners, your eraser, your folders, that's a mixture of things in your bag, okay? The trail mix that you saw on the first slide, that is a mixture. What makes something a mixture? A mixture is two or more substances that can be separated, and we're gonna get the full definition in a moment. And if something is not a mixture, then what is it? We're gonna explore that in a moment. So, here we are. It might be hard for you to see this, so I'll go ahead and read it to you. You're cleaning out a cabinet and at home and you find an old jar filled with what appears to be a mixture of pieces of metal and a thick oily liquid. Is it safe to dump out? Should you pour it down the drain? How do you figure out what to do with it if you're not sure what it is? The next two days you will work with an unlabeled jar filled with a mixture of substances. In real life, when barrels of unknown substances are discovered, a hazardous material or hazmat team is called to clean up or dispose of hazardous materials. When a hazmat team works with an unknown substance, the team first tries to identify it after taking care of any immediate hazards. The substance could be called a mixture, a combination of two or more pure substances 
that can be physically separated, such as filtering, straining, or sorting. It is essential for the team to know what is in the mixture so that they can determine how to store and dispose of its different substances. The first step in identifying an unknown substance is to take a sample of each part of the mixture. In this activity, you will design and carry out a three-part plan to separate the liquid and solid substances, separate the different liquids, and separate and clean the different solids. So, how can you separate substances in a mixture? That is the challenge question we're going to look to answer throughout this process. So, on your sheet, the very first thing you're going to do is we're going to look at a video, okay? And you're going to examine the unidentified mixture. It is at the beginning of the video. And during the course of the video, the beginning of it, you're simply going to look at the substance. You will see different parts of it and you're going to attempt to describe what you see in that container. So you're going to list at least five observations of what you see. So, an observation is any information you can collect with your five senses. See, touch, taste, smell, and hear. So now that you've seen the video, what type of data did you collect? So there are two types of data that you must understand. There is quantitative data, not quantitative, quantity. This refers to anything, any measurements that are made with instruments, rulers, balances, graduated cylinders, beakers, thermometers. So any numerical measurement that you take that you then take data for. And you'll typically put data like that in charts and graphs. Qualitative data, however, quality is basically data that you use your five senses to gain, okay? And that's why we have the picture of the five senses here. Please take a moment to document the difference between quantitative and qualitative in your notebook. All right, so now next You're going to develop a plan. So now that you know what that liquid looks like, you're going to develop a plan to separate your substances. So if you were actually able to do it, you would have these materials, you would observe the substance, and we're gonna go ahead and post a picture of that substance here again for you to be able to see it. And then, you're going to make an observation of what these substances are and you're going to go ahead and create a plan on how to separate them using these materials that you have at your table. So once you've recorded your observations, you're going to go ahead and separate these substances and then you're going to explain how you're going to clean the substances. So you are going to work on that now, probably take you about 15 to 20 minutes to do. If you're unable to finish it today, then you can finish it tomorrow.
So at this point, you should have your plan in place, determining how you're gonna go ahead and separate these substances. So you wanna check your group's procedure. Do you have a plan to separate the solids from the liquids? What solids need to be taken out of the container? And what are you going to use to take them out of the container? Now, some of you may not know the names of these, so I am going to go ahead and tell you what they are called, okay? You have a pipette, which I already showed you. You have your small plastic cups. You have plastic forceps. Please make sure you know the correct names. I know they look like tweezers, but we call them forceps. You have a medium plastic cup and you have filter paper. So please use this guide when you're documenting what you're going to use. So what are you going to use to separate the liquids? Where are you going to put the liquids? And what will you use to clean the various solids? And where will you put the various solids? So once you're able to say yes to all of this, you're ready to see how we actually go about separating them. So based on your observations of the container prior to separation, how many substances do you think there are in the unidentified mixture? What evidence from your observation supports your answer? What is the purpose of separating the different substances in the mixture? Please take a moment to discuss this with your group. We will answer number two together. Well, I'm not gonna touch number one yet because we want to go through the separation process. And once we go through the separation process, you'll be able to see if you were correct. What is the purpose of separating the substance we will talk about together? So please take a moment and discuss with your group now. Okay, so what is the purpose of separating the different substances? Well, we want to know what these substances are. In order to know what the substances are, we have to test them. But in order to test them, we have to have a clean sample of each substance, which means the solids must be separated and cleaned from the liquids so when we're testing them, we are testing the properties of the solids and not the liquids on them. And we have to separate and get a clean sample of each of the liquids so that we can test their individual properties without contamination of the other liquid, altering our results. So explain what is a mixture. Here is now the definition. You may have gotten it before, but if not, I'll give you a moment to copy it. A mixture is a combination of two or more pure substances that can be physically separated by methods such as filtering, straining, or sorting. So if you can just pause for one moment and make sure you have that definition copied down if you don't already have it. Which, which is a property of every mixture? One substance dissolves in another substance. The molecules of one substance break down into the other. Different samples of a single mixture have different characteristics. One substance can be separated from another through physical means. So. Let's take a look at this question. This is an SSA question, so I want to talk about how to actually answer this question. First of all, let's go ahead and look at the question. 
which is a property of every mixture. Oh, this is, there we go. What is the property of every mixture? So one substance dissolves in another substance. Well, in trail mix, does anything dissolve in anything else? No. So that's wrong. The molecules of one substance break down in another. Again, in something like trail mix or salad or the contents of the things in your book bag, do they break down into one another? No. Different samples of a single mixture have different characteristics. Well, let's take a look at that. If you take out some of the things in your book bag and place on a table, are they gonna have different characteristics as if you took a second sample out? Maybe. But if I had a glass of Kool-Aid, if I took out a little bit of Kool-Aid and put it in one cup, is it going to have different characteristics than if I take out some of the Kool-Aid and put it in another cup? No. Again, we have to look at the word every, and that does not qualify for every single substance. So this answer is wrong. One substance can be separated from another through physical means. This is absolutely correct. So when you're answering a question, always think of a reason why you can eliminate another answer that you are confident with before answering the question. So circle your vocabulary words, okay, which is here. Okay, a substance should be your vocabulary word as well, but we're not going to go through the whole thing with that. Underline important words. In this case, I circled it every. Box in the question. Okay. Eliminate wrong choices, which we did. So this is how you should approach every SSA style question. walking down the sidewalk and you see a puddle of green oily liquid on the ground. Can you identify the contents of the puddle through observation alone? So take one minute and discuss amongst your group if you can identify the substance through just observation alone. Okay, so one of the things I do when I teach this in the beginning of the year is I pull out four beakers with a clear liquid in them. And I ask my students to describe the substances. And of course, they all say they're four beakers with a clear liquid in them. They all look the same. So I tell them, or I ask them, does that mean that they are the same? And one of the things I do to prove that they are not the same is I do a pH test. And the four substances that I typically show them are water, ethanol, hydrochloric acid, and sodium hydroxide. And I pick those substances because their pHs are radically different. But it also highlights the very important point that just because something looks the same doesn't mean it is the same. So you can't take for granted in a lab that you know what a substance is just by looking at it. So could we definitively identify what the substance is? Probably not. Okay. We might surmise based on its location, what we think it is, but suppose someone broke a bottle of something else in that area and that car just so happened to be parked in front of it. Maybe it's not an automotive fluid. Maybe it's something else. So you can't be 100% sure without actually looking at the substance. So now we're going to change some things here. Your paper says something else. So here you have a metal cylinder.
And here you have a short cylinder. Okay, so, and that's what your paper says. So what you're going to do is you're going to follow the procedures. In this case, you're gonna watch the video of me separating the mixture, and you're gonna report record the appearance of each substance in the unknown mixture. So please pay attention to the video that's going to be playing, and you're going to use the information as I separate the mixture to record the different substances. Now, you have one liquid that is lighter than the other, so please pay attention to that um, as liquid A and liquid B. And then you have your metal cylinder, your plastic pieces, and your short cylinder. Okay, both of these are metal, however, one is short, one is long. So, uh, you will reference a sheet throughout the unit, so please be as descriptive as possible when recording, and you will have time during the course of the video. So, at this point, before we get to this, you're actually going to watch the video. You're going to watch the video. So we're going to stop the PowerPoint. We're going to go ahead and watch the video and you are going to utilize that information and fill out your sheet. All right, now that you've seen the video, what you should have seen is a clear substance, an orange substance. The clear substance was a little bit thicker than the orange substance, more viscous, that's a word, viscosity. Your long metal cylinder, your short metal cylinder, and two different types of plastic pieces, one which is black and square, and one which is a red, uh, red tube. So, how would you separate oil and vinegar, and how would you separate your salt and iron shavings? Take about two minutes and discuss that with your table mates. All right, so oil and vinegar you would separate using a pipette and your salt and iron shavings you would separate using a magnet removing the iron shavings from the salt. So there are two different types of mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixtures. Now, that means different and that means same. So a heterogeneous mixture, you can clearly see the different parts. A salad where you can see the tomatoes and the lettuce and the radishes and the onions and the cucumbers, or the trail mix where you can see the M&Ms and the peanuts and the cashews and the raisins. A homogeneous mixture, substances are evenly distributed so you cannot see the parts. Salt water, soda, your Kool-Aid, for example, you cannot see the parts, okay? All mixtures can be physically separated. So we're gonna end with this today. What type of mixture was your unknown mixture? 
what evidence from your observations support this, and list at least, at least one example of each type of mixture you've seen in your everyday life. So please take a moment and discuss this with your classmates. So the last thing we're going to cover is an SSA question. Jimmy put some dirt and water into a jar and put the lid on and then shook the jar. The contents of the jar turned brown. Jimmy set the jar on the table and checked it back every five minutes for 20 minutes. The pictures below show what Jimmy saw. Which of the following best explains what happened in the jar? The dirt and the water combined to form new compounds? Well. We can still see the dirt and the water. No. The water and dirt combine to form a heterogeneous mixture. Well, do we see each individual substance? And can they be separated? So we're going to hold off on that because that sounds like that's right, but you never definitively pick a right answer until you have read all of the answers. The water dissolves some of the dirt particles, creating a solution. Well, is that evident? Could you see that here? Okay, probably not. The, the dirt broke down into elements and settled in the jar according to density. Okay, the dirt did not break down into elements, okay? If it broke down into elements, it would probably appear differently. Okay, actually it had combined to form a heterogeneous mixture and it settled out. Okay, in this case, yes, because of density, it settled out into a more dense substance and water was less dense, so it hung out on top. Kind of like what oil and vinegar does or kind of like what... Um, I guess if you were to put sand and water, you could mix it up and then the sand would eventually settle out to the bottom. So I really enjoyed going over this with you today. I hope this was helpful. And um, we do have to go over the last questions on the previous slide. So if you could just talk a little bit about that with your partners and just share your answers. Um, some mixtures, the type of mixture that was your unknown mixture was a heterogeneous mixture. So could you separate them and see the different parts? If your answer to that was yes, which it should have been, then that is your evidence. And here, all of us have seen different mixtures, so it's based on what you've seen. So thank you for spending this time with me, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.